Before Across the Spider-Verse had released, I had sent Marvel an email asking them for free tickets to the premiere of the movie. Well, the response was not optimal, to say the least. I had spent many nights awake and tried to figure out a way to get back at Marvel for not sending me these tickets. And a year later, I have the perfect revenge plan. I'm going to change your perception of the ending of Across the Spider-Verse that, that your expectations for Beyond the Spider-Verse will be much greater, so much that Marvel will have no choice but to send me tickets to Beyond the Spider-Verse. I'm basically doing them free promotion. It's free real estate. So please Marvel, please send me tickets. But this is just a theory, and theory can only take you so far, so you have been warned. After fighting off the Spider Society, we see Miles return back to what seems like his home universe. Except it wasn't. Since the spider that bit him was from Earth-42, the Go Home machine had sent him back to Earth-42 instead of Earth-1610. In this universe, we see that things are out of hand. Things just got out of hand. The city is being run by criminals, Miles' dad is dead, and Uncle Aaron is alive, and the best part is, Miles has dreads. However, that's not the important part. The important part is that he's evil. Or is he? Don't give me hope. The first thing is to look at the colour scheme of the scene. It's red and blue. And I know of a certain superhero who wears red and blue. One billion points to whoever guesses it correctly. Normally when the prowler appears, the colour scheme is purple and green. We see this in the colour scheme of the whole of Earth 42, besides the apartment. And I'll get to this later on. We also see this in Into the Spider-Verse, where Miles first meets Peter Parker, his spidey sense aura emanates green and purple, which is supposedly signalling the fact that he was destined to be the prowler in this universe after Uncle Aaron. However, through the intervention of Kingpin's Collider and Peter telling him that he will train him, Miles' destiny changed and he became Spider-Man. We find out that in Across the Spider-Verse, Kingpin's Collider that had extracted a spider that was supposed to bite Miles G. Morales and instead bit our main Miles Morales. This means that Miles G. Morales, aka Miles with Dreads, was destined to be the Spider-Man of that universe, meaning that in theory, there's some inherent good underlying within it. Hey, wait, wait. Listen up, twerps, subscribe right now or I'll hunt you guys down and chop off each of your fingers and make you watch Baby Shark on loop. But wait, who are you? That's not important. Now what is important is that you subscribe. And I mean it. I mean, I was just gonna say that. Shut up, you dumb nerd! Um, okay, well. That was weird. In the TV playing in the apartment, we see that J. Jonah Jameson mentions the Sinister Six cartel running the town. Now remember the colour scheme I told you about? This colour scheme for Earth-42 could hint at the fact that the Sinister Six is running the town, since the Sinister Six is often green, well most of them are. Now in a town run by criminals, why would you have to secretly hide to do crime? Unless if you're trying to stop crime. In which case, laying low and working the case underground makes sense. And since Miles G. Morales never got bit by the spider, he wouldn't have any powers, but the Prowler suit would allow him to do that. Now before you start commenting saying that this is all just awful. I still can explain reasons as to why they do act or it against Miles. The first thing is that Uncle Aaron does laugh at the fact that Miles calls him a good guy and it might just be because they aren't the typical good guys and instead are more vigilante sticking up for the people they care about. They might just necessarily not like the term good guy. Another thing is that Uncle Aaron does punch the crap out of that boxing bag. However, it could just be a scare tactic meaning that this interrogation scene is a lot like the one we saw Miles have with Peter P. Parker except for the fact that Miles is obviously less menacing and the scene was way more funnier than it was intimidating. But at the end of the day, we won't find out until Beyond the Spider-Verse comes out, and I'm going to email Marvel asking for free tickets. In the meantime, comment below what you thought, and subscribe whilst you're there.